Okay, so talk about more types, and so once again, these are things that we've seen, but this is, becomes a little bit confusing in Java, and so let me explain this a little bit. There's more to talk about here, and we're not going to get all of that, but it turns out you've got to be careful how you treat Java, especially when you tr work with the division sign. And so I've declared a double here, and see this little decimal here, 5.0 divided by 2.0? When I do that, I get 2.5. But you've got to be careful here, because see this example below that? And you get the same behavior in Python, by the way. I'm dividing 5 divided by 2. I don't get 2.5. What do I get? 2.0. That's a wrong answer, isn't it? So what you'll see so much in, in, in Python is people make sure they put that decimal there to let you know. to let you know that that is a double, you know? Where with no decimal, it's an integer. And so you've got to be careful about that error. And that's why many times people use casting. And so I'm just going to go quickly through the next slide. And, and don't worry about this because we're going to get this as we move on. Uh, orders of operations, we've already covered that. Just like math, you know, you start with uh, uh, what? Uh, all the different, all the same math rules. You do parentheses first and multiplication, division, you know, addition, subtraction. So, And he's just kind of going over it and what kind of answers you would get if you didn't treat your parentheses first here. So just like you learned in math, so it is in computer science. Be careful about mismatching typing, okay? And, and basically... I've got a string that I've declared five. I've declared it as a string, but I try to put the number five in there without my uh, quotes, and I'm going to get an error. Java is going to be very strict typed, and that's good. I mean, it's good to get these errors because you'll become a better programmer, as opposed to where PHP you, you try to convert a uh, a string to a number and vice versa. It doesn't care. It just tries to convert everything to everything. Uh, you have to make sure you're declaring uh, your your strict typing your numbers. Because it's not going to like uh, uh, if this right here, if you try to uh, try to declare that as a string because it's not one. It's, you've got to put some quotes around it. Now, there's, a ways, there's ways around it using certain classes, and we're not going to get into that right now. We're going to move on, but we'll see that in the future. And he's just showing you what casting is now. And there's a video on casting. I think I reviewed that. You want to watch that video on casting, okay? And let me bring up the notes real quick here. Uh, this is done by MacHead. Yeah, right here. Make sure you watch the video on casting. It's very simple, and we've seen it in PHP. And all you really have to do is just, in a sense, to cast something, you put the name in front of it in parentheses. All right, so here's an example right here. I'm going to say, well, let this integer be 18.7. Well, that's not right, because an integer is not a, a decimal. And so I would get an error there. Java doesn't like that. But I could cast 18.7 as an integer by going what? INT in front of it with the parentheses. And doing that is going to convert it to an integer, which would be 18. Can't be 18.7 because integer doesn't have enough what? Bits to create an 18.7. That's why I use an integer. It has fewer bits than a double. Okay? And here's another example of using casting. So just to let you know it's there, people use it. If you see it, you know, and you may have to use it, you know what it is now. Not a difficult concept. Casting with strings is a little bit more complex than casting with numbers, and we'll do that in a later video, all right? Uh, the root and heart of programming, of course, are methods, and they're functions, just like you learned in math class. You stick something in something, and it's something happens. And that's what a function is, and when you put a function in a class, it's called a method, and so we're going to be talking all about functions. We're actually going to run this program today, so uh, let's just get started right here. Here's the simplest function. We learned this uh, in the last lecture, and that's the hello world, right? Well, we got our print, static, void, main, string, arguments, and we got just a system dot out print line, hi, and out comes hi, and so we've done all that. So that's the basic structure of a Java program. You got to learn that first before you learn anything, and then you're going to move on from there, and that's what we're going to do today. All right, so we're going to create methods, and methods kind of have this form right here, where you go public, static, void, and you put the name of the method. You create that yourself, and what, are, and inside those curly brackets, anything that you want it to do. All right. And if you want to call and run that method, just like you did in PHP, you just call its name. Okay, so now we're going to make a method. So let's start with a simple one. Here's a simple method. We're going to actually going to talk about how this works. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to run it in a clip so you can see it. What you notice right here, you see my public void main? Notice how that he's making that his last method in this class. And so that's his convention, all right? He's going to put it at the last. And there's a lot of uh, programming where they'll put all their, declare their variables and functions at the beginning of the program. Then they'll run the main at the last. You see that in some types of programming and coding, all right? So he's got his class statement right here, all right? So he makes a class called new line, and he's going to create two methods, one called new line and one called three lines. And so what the new line method has inside of it, once again, he's just declared his own name. He used public static void, the name new line. He made that up. 
in curly brackets, you put the function that's going to occur, and all it's going to do is print, print, print nothing. So what, is, what does that do? It just creates a space, I mean a return. And so all it's going to do is create returns. So if I run that method, so in my next method, I'll call it three lines, and what I'm going to do is run that same method, what? Three times. Let me see if I can get my drawer here. There you go. So what, when I run this method right here, it just does, it runs it three times in three lines. There you go. So when you run the program, what's going to happen? The first thing it's going to do is going to point to main. It's going to run the main program. So in the main program, the first thing it's going to do is print out line one. Then it's going to run this three lines. Now three lines, what does that do? That line runs the method line three times, all right? And what do you do? You get three carriage returns. And finally, what he's going to do at the end is print out line two. So what you should do is you get line one, three carriage returns, and line two. Let's bring this up in our Eclipse and run the... And you should, you know, be eating this up a little bit because you've done all this stuff already in PHP. So here we come right here. Let me find it. Uh, new line, Java. And here's the method right here. And I'm going to go line one, run my three lines, and then line two. Let's go and run this and see what happens. And there it is, line one, three returns, line two. Any questions? Okay, great. That was easy, right? And pretty much I think this entire lesson is kind of that easy. All right, so it won't be a lot of difficult stuff here. So, but, you know, that was an example of a method that was created without any uh, input. But you can put stuff inside of methods. You know that. You can put arguments inside of methods. So we want to go ahead and put some arguments inside of a method. And the way to do that is just very simple. You just type the name. All right. So what's that saying? Is it's a type? Is it a string? Is it an integer? Is it a double? And then whatever name you want to give that parameter, and then you can stick that parameter into your methods. We're going to see some examples that make a lot more sense. But in order to call and run that, what you have to do is basically just call the name that you give it, and then put the parameter that you've actually uh, decided to run in there. And he's got some nice examples here, which I've actually given you code for. So what he's going to do is he's going to create a squaring method. It's going to square whatever number you got coming in. So x times x. So then let's take a look at his method. So first of all, we have a class statement. We create a class called square. So that's the first with the curly brackets, and that's the ending curly brackets. Inside of that, I'm first going to create a method called public void static print square integer x. Is that whatever number I put in here has to be a what? An integer. If it's not, what did I just do? Is this going to be an error because it's expecting an integer? So it's strict type. This is not PHP. And so that's it. That's my method I created. So what I'm going to do here is go to my public void main, and whatever I have inside of here, when I run the program, that's going to run first. So here's an example where I just take a value. I create an integer called it value. And so I stick that into my function right here. And it runs the function. It shows it should be what? 2 times 2, and what is that equal to? Mm -hmm. The next one, I'm going to run it again. I can just stick a number in there. It'll be uh, put 3 in there, and I'm going to put a 3 in there, and 3 times 3 is what? And now what I'm going to do is take this value, which is 2, multiply it by 2. What do I get? 2 times 2 is? And then I'm going to put that into this method here. And what am I going to get? So let's move on down. That's exactly should be the output for that method. And we're going to run that program in a moment. But before we do, let me see if you can look at these programs and determine what's wrong here. What have I done wrong in this particular program here? Right, I got a hello. I can't put a string in there, right? And, I've, and uh, so let's go to the next one. Let's take a see what I've done with the wrong with the other one. What have I done here? What's, what's wrong with this program? I've got a double here, right? Right. Yeah, it's an integer. It's not a decimal. So I, I went and declared this as a double. I'm trying to stick in an integer, so that's not correct either. Okay. Yeah, you've got to get that strict type done because that's what, I mean, with PHP, you've got away with it. In Java, you're not going to get away with it. Okay, so let's go ahead and go and run that program. So I'm going to go to my Eclipse. I'm going to take a look at that program. We're going to run it. It's called Square Java. And basically, here it's got an integer as a strict type number. And I'm just going to multiply it times itself because I, because I got x times x. And uh, put in the value 2, 3, and 2 times 2, which is 4. Let's run this program. And the answer is 4, 9, and 16. All right, so I'm using the main to call the function, okay? And then I'm running uh, running this function each time. Each time I, I see this name print square, you see that? It calls this function up here. And it puts whatever I have in this value in here, and it runs the method. Got it? Cool. 
All right, so we're moving along with, with uh, this is, like I said, not a difficult uh, lecture today.